for this podcast, and then I was going to flip the camera so you can see the shot. <laughs> yeah, Let me see. Uh-oh, excuse me. Who dropped the shot? I did. My bad did it. Anybody have earphones with a C? No. For a what? An iPhone? No. I have an Android. No. But look at Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. Hi Erica. I don't hear it. It's a podcast, but oh. I can't hear. And I don't have my iPod. I don't own iPods, actually. <laughs> Let me grab my phone. I'm behind you. Okay. You know what? Maybe. Wait, let me check this bag to see if my earphones are in. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can hear. Uh oh, are these my earphones? Oh damn! No. I can hear you a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Say something. I make it. I make it quick so you can get to your show. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. It's, I didn't even know I was supposed to be here. That's the crazy thing. It's okay. Let me go ahead and get started. All right. Here we go.
everybody. Welcome back to Couch Conversations. I am your host, Danny Girl. I am very excited about the show we have tonight. And I just got to give her her flowers tonight, okay? I did my research. Y'all know if it's somebody I really, 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 really am a fan of, I got to go dig up my research and the accolades. This lady has did everything, like literally. The list of stuff she had did is, she has done is so long, like she's still doing stuff. Um, So let me just read her bio real quick before I introduce her. A queen so prolific that she has transcended into goddesshood. Egypt Black Nile is the golden goddess of beauty, body, and sex. This jet-setting, internationally award-winning performer holds the most burlesque titles in history with over 40 sh- under her belt shimmies. This Golden State babe is based out of Los Angeles and took the world by storm after graduating from Lily Von Stoops School for Wayward Girls in 2012. Having appeared on the 21st Century Burlesque Top 50 list since 2014, Egypt continues to reign as the most influential stars of the neo-burlesque revival. She has graced over 50 plus festival and show stages. Oh my God. And I could just go on and on and on. Listen, um, she has been included in Stiletto Vixen, Shake That Ass, The Art of Fuckery. She teaches classes. She's she's the shit, y'all. That's all I can say. Miss Egypt Black Nile, welcome to the show, baby. Hi, thank you. Oh my God, listening to that resume, I was like, ooh, ooh me? <laughs> Girl, that's only half of it. <laughs> yeah, and that's just the burlesque resume. Right, right. And then I was reading the reviews, just everything. I was like, this girl is, she is where it's at. Uh, oh, you know, thank I've you. I've been a fan for the last three years. Uh, since the day we met, I seen you perform and I was just like, whoa. Like, I had never really seen uh, a black burlesque dancer. So it was just like mm-hmm. so beautiful. Like, just to see you in that element. And yeah. all your different characters. I think my li- I think okay, so Jessica Rabbit used to be my favorite, but I think it's little Kim now. The little <laughs> Kim thing is where it's at, girl. That that's it. That's it. I love Oh it. my God. Here's the tea about little Kim. So little Kim back in the day. See, I'm about I'm not gonna be telling my age today, but back in the early two thousands, there you have it. Me and my sister Uzi used to dance together. And it's funny because she always did Little Kim. I would never do Little Kim, I always did Trina. So I always did characters like Shantae Moore, Trina, Aaliyah, probably all the more light skin, you know, back in them times, you know, whatever. And she did Little Kim. But now that I have started revisiting the drag community and the drag shows, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to start pulling out Lil' Kim, Trina, everybody, whatever makes the audience go. And I tried Lil' Kim and it worked. And I was just like, oh, okay. Well, let's okay, go, Lil' Kim. Tell you this. I have to tell you this about your Lil' Kim video. So at the last Drag Tiquity, I recorded you and I posted it on my YouTube. Okay. These are my current YouTube stats from your video. Four weeks ago, I had 55 subscribers. I now have 452. Oh, my God. The video has 83,000 views. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, little kill. Come on. Want to bumble with the video? I was like, Egypt, <laughs> come on now. Oh, my God. That is beautiful. That was beautiful. 83,000 views. I was like, That's wow. Amazing. I knew it was going to do big because I was just like, w- once people see this on my YouTube, I knew it was going to draw people, but I wasn't expecting 83,000 views on my YouTube. But yeah, Oh, maybe I need to go post it. You should. Uh, 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 uh. So um, okay. one thing I wanted to talk to you about is the House of Nile mentorship program. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
I was really um interested in that. I, I I was reading through some of your classes and things like that, and you have a scholarship program. I knew you were a dance teacher, but I did not know it went that deep. Oh yeah, I started the um, House and Now scholarship program. So you know, being a part of the pageant community, the drag community, and all these communities, we always had houses. I belong to so many houses and I've always been a teacher. I taught junior high, I taught high school, I taught ballet, modern jazz, I even taught in the pool studios. One thing about burlesque is that we have a lot of stuff like BurleyCon and the Burlesque Hall of Fame where people can get educated and take classes from different legends from the 40s and the 1950s and all that kind of stuff. But when I came in, there were no teachers no teachers that look like me let's say that there was no black instructors there were no latin instructors and so all of my instructors were white and so i was like you know maybe i should teach not burlesque because everybody taught burlesque but let me teach different components that you can add to your burlesque. and so when i first started burlesque being a black woman or a black latin woman and being thick I was told I couldn't do certain things. I couldn't say certain things. I couldn't dance certain ways. It was just so limited and everything was nasty, 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 right? And then one day I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I started saying, can we cuss on this show? I started saying pussy because they told me I couldn't say it. I started gyrating on the floor everything i used to do in the strip clubs i also did the strip clubs everything i did in the strip clubs i bought to burlesque and then i said how can i teach this how can i mentor this i'm already mentoring ballet and jazz and pageantry how can i mentor burlesque and one of my uh burlesque daughters said why don't you have a house and i was like a house in burlesque you know and so she was like it could be the house of Nile. And so those girls or those women that I started the house with, they all had a specialty. And we all divided up to mentor different things in burlesque, like floor work, band dancing, pole dance, whatever they wanted to add, you know, to the burlesque. And um, it became a big thing. And during the pandemic is when it really because then I started doing life coaching and sex coaching. And I wrote like this little book or whatever called um, Fuck Like a Boss. And it was all about dancing and what kind of orgasms do you have? Are you the pillow person? So all this stuff is like being a part of House of Now. And I have women and men, them days and all from every part of the world, from Europe, to the United States, like everywhere. I have kids and sisters everywhere. So the house in now is everywhere. And I never thought it would be as big, but here we are. And so now we have a little bit more diverse set of teachers that's out here teaching, you know, so yeah. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, like, so, I grew up in a very strict Christian household. Uh oh. So you know Me too. Uh -oh. That has to do with sex. It's just nasty. Mm -hmm. it's, you ain't supposed to do that. And I kind of carry that into my adulthood. And I have to admit and have a transparent moment. Okay. I have kind of opened up meeting you because I've noticed <laughs> like your classes because I, I watch the videos okay don't think i don't be paying attention i watch the videos and i notice like okay. your classes and stuff i was like you know um she's very sensual and she's very yeah. into getting in touch with yourself so it kind of opened yeah. me up to start paying attention to some of the stuff that you were teaching and oh yeah i mean just even oh, yeah. even just watching you dance like you know i know growing up that would have kind of been like you shouldn't be there watching that but I just think it's so beautiful and the art is just so creative and I just love it. The 
And that's the thing. Our is. Outfits together with the dance and the song and um, everything just coincides and it's just so beautiful. Yeah, it's about, you know, that alter ego, being other characters, really getting in touch with yourselves. When I started teaching, I started teaching women who were like in their 60s and their 70s. And what we don't understand as we get older is that our body changes, you know, our vagina changes, like so many things changes that we do not pay attention to. And it took me a long time to connect to my sexuality and my sensuality. When I was growing up, people were already calling me Betty Boop and Jessica Rabbit. And I was always offended, like, what, what, what? What does that mean? Because I grew up in a Christian home too, you know? And are you saying I'm a whore? Are you saying I'm nasty? But they took the way I talk. We never holler in my family. So we everyone has a like very um, canting voice, canning voice, very soft spoken. And my eyes have has always been alluring. When I worked for Disney, I was the first cast of Lion King. When I worked for Disney, I remember they used to take me off the runway and change my eye makeup. And they say, you look like you're having sex with the kids. And I was a kid, so I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, oh my God. But it's so important for us as women, as women, to really be in touch with our sexuality and our sensuality because we're out here and we're like dating and getting married and being in these relationships and we don't even know who we are. We don't even know what we like. We don't even know what our quit look like. Period. Yeah. And people don't know the your teens, twenties, thirties, forties, your clips start doing different things. You start wanting to be touched different ways, different sensations. Everything is different. Maybe you used to like it rough in your twenties, but in your forties, you want to be romanticized. Like it's just different. You know, yeah. things that you tolerate then you don't tolerate now. The patience is different. So the body chemistry changes too. And it all for me is expressive through my dance because every transition that I go through in age is transition through my art as well. So I say I get more sexual as I get older. Okay. Okay. One thing that I love about you is your humility. Like when I met you, I knew you were somebody i just didn't know who like i just knew you were somebody i was like she has to be like somebody special and then when i started following you on facebook and i started seeing you like in the pageant world and all these different places i was like okay she's really doing her thing but then when i pulled up your biography i was like i knew when i met her she was somebody special i knew she Aww, was thing thank you. and, and Listen, ma'am, for you to have this resume you have, you are an humble spirit. Thank you. You would Thank like, you. listen, I know people that have done a quarter of this and think they the shit, okay? Like, yeah. You can't man. get nowhere. It's like you really can't get nowhere stepping on people. And throughout my life, I've always really been into pageantry and dance and competitions, cheerleading and all this stuff. And I feel like people always used me to get where they want to go and then feel like, oh, I don't need her anymore, you know. And it's sad, but I never held that against nobody. I just kept pushing, you know. And like I tell people, I praise through everything. I heard somebody say the other day, oh, you can believe in God and take off your clothes. Um, huh? I don't understand that. I was a praise dancer before I was anything. You know, everything I do is through praise. When I take off my clothes, it's a blessing that I can't. You know, I, I just turned 50 years old. I usually don't even tell my age, but at the end of the day, it's a blessing that I'm able to be this age and still high kick and do the splits and jump around with the kids man anybody that have not seen your show they need to go see it uh wherever you are in whatever city you are in whatever state country village you are <laughs> they need to see at least one of your shows 
And Sad. I kid you not, if you did not tell people how old you were, they would not know because you don't look it and you definitely Thank do you. not move like it. Thank you. It took a long time for me to tell people my age because I come from an era where you age out of everything. But gratefully, you know, due to the millennials, <laughs> due to the time that we live in now, you know, it's different. You know, um, you can be you. Nobody's aging you out. If you if you can do it, do it. You know, um, don't let age. I'm, my godmother is seventy five years old, and she was a, the first uh, villain in a Double O Seven movie, and she still teach the Dunham Technique and African Dancing at Spelman College. And that lady played them drums and would do African art girl and she could wear heels higher than me. 76 years old. So gotta stop letting society tell us what we can and what we can't do and what we supposed to look like because we are certain age. because sometimes we get better with age. Yes, yes. Well, I know you're currently at a show. Just in case anybody yeah. want to pop up on you tonight, let them know where you at. I'm at Hamburger Mary's in Long Beach. I'm at a drag show. I have a whole show about my pussy tonight. It's going to be off the chain. And then I'm going to do with Danny Girl Likes. I'm going to do like a blues number. But I'm doing a different type of Jessica Rabbit tonight. I'm wearing a blue dress in place of my red. Instead of red hair, I'm wearing blonde. But it's still a Jessica Rabbit outfit, just I switched the colors around. So, yes, and be everything. Oh, my God. I just love you so much, Egypt. Oh, I love you, too. And I really would like to come back so we can have a more accurate and more time to be on the show. Yeah, um, baby, this, this list of accolades right here, it's like um, a page and a half long. So yeah, yeah, we got a lot to dig into. Um, we have a lot to dig into. Twenty twenty four. Period. <laughs> Period. And I'm competing <laughs> September twenty seventh for Miss Nations. Let's so, go, Miss Nations. Yeah. Fem Queens twenty twenty two twenty three. Period. <laughs> Period. Period. And that's She's what ready we do. Snatching all the awards, okay? <laughs> I get bored easy. I'm an Aries, so. Once, like, Berla started, like, uh, I went back to pageantry. I did pageantry. Um, I have 45 titles in my Mughal life, like, not Egypt, as I reach it. From the universe system, the Miss America system, the Miss Belize system, like, all these systems from when I was 12, 13 years old. So then I wrapped up in Berla because I felt like, What's well, going to make me stand alone and burlesque as a black performer? I want to do something that they say black women can't do. And so they gave me all the la labels. I'm fat, I'm skinny, I'm black, I'm brown, I'm green. It was just so many things. And I had to stop letting people put me in those boxes and say, fuck it. Guess what? I'm going to be the best ever and the first to do it. You are too. You are. Absolutely. You are. Um, Gigi said, Egypt, you are truly amazing. I am a fan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Miss Gigi. Yes. I can't yes, see nothing. We got to let you come back. We got to have you back. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I would love to talk about the pussy a little bit more. I would love to talk Maybe about. ma'am. I want to get into these classes you teach. That's really. Yeah, absolutely. We got to have you back. I need you for the whole hour. Um, yes, ma'am. You teach classes. Yes, you got uh, uh accounts where you do lives and you got mm -hmm. a lot going on. Oh I yeah. To read this review for you that I found, okay? Okay. I had the pleasure of watching Egypt in the film Shakedown, and she is everything they say and more. A literal queen of seduction. I hope y'all get the chance to experience the magic that is Egypt. Uh, where that come from? It's on your website. <laughs> Oh, I need to go check it. I have a, I have oh, yeah, like a I printed them all out. Look, I printed them all out. <laughs> oh my god, I have people that be on the website checking stuff, and I'm, my brain. Let me tell you, if I didn't have people helping me, I wouldn't know where I'm at. Like tonight, I don't even know I'm supposed to be. 
But SmackDown was a very special, special moment. Like, if people really watch the documentaries, I was in my 20s then. And um, it was a time of the Black revival, a lot of things, a time where people don't know. That was a time when they had shut down all the Black strip clubs. And so we kind of kept going and um, people were still coming out and there were lesbian clubs and they only talk about lesbian clubs in New York and San Francisco, but they were heavy in LA too. And I danced all in all the lesbian clubs from DC to New York. My favorite was Atlanta. I, I tore the strip clubs up in Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> but um, it was a time of the black revival and that's what Shakedown is all about. And it's just, uh, you know, our growth and our sisterhood. I never even realized at that time that we would be sisters because we fought so much back then. We didn't have computers and all that kind of stuff to cuss each other out. We had black twin. <laughs> so, you know, it's an amazing documentary. I hope everybody goes watch it. It's Shakedown. And it's about exotic dancers, drag. Where can they and find it at? Do you know? Shakedown.com. And it's on my website. I mean, excuse me. It's on my Instagram. Gotta see your black now in Linktree. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Egypt, so much. Thank you for having me. So much. Thank you for having me. Yes, we will reschedule ASAP. And you have a beautiful show tonight. Tell somebody Thank to record it for me. Please, please, please. Okay. I came straight to my car just to come visit. I, know. <laughs> I didn't want to disappoint you. I said I was going to do it. And then these people was like, oh, where you at? I was like, oh, shit. So I said, I'm going to try to hit both. I know you be busy. I was thinking, too. I was like, I wonder if she have a show or something tonight. No, I was almost in bed, believe it or not. Thank you so much, beautiful. Have a good show. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, love you. Talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. Bye. All right, y'all, in case y'all missed it, we just had the beautiful Egypt Black Nile on the show, and we gonna have her back. Um, she's at Hamburger Mary's in Long Beach if anybody want to pull up and check her out tonight. She'll be there performing along with some of my other beautiful, amazing friends from Dragtiquity. So y'all go pull up and check them out. Um, I have time left, so I wanted to go over some things with y'all. Um, first of all, I wanted to let y'all know September 21st, we are having Let's Church. Um, if you've been there, it's at my church. If you haven't, it is at 7660 South Compton Avenue in Los Angeles. Um, it's on the corner of 76th Place and Compton Avenue. We will be having Let's Church at 5 o'clock p.m. This is sports edition. I'm asking that if you come, please try to wear some sports theme attire, um, preferably a jersey. We're going to be giving out prizes. I already have the gift bags over there. I'm still adding to them. Um, we'll be giving out prizes that day. We're going to do a, a concert. It's going to be a little different, though. It's sports themed, so we're going to be doing some sports trivia. Um, I have one special gift that I'll be giving away from one of the Green Bay Packers. Um, so it'll be a lot going on that day. Uh so I would appreciate it if y'all could come out and support. Um, I still have room if anybody would like to participate as far as um, being on the show or being a vendor. I still have room, so let me know. Um, we will have special performances by Related, Trinity's Chosen Vessel, and Auntie Poss. Um, thank you to Auntie Poss, who has been coming out performing at Les Church for the past couple months. Um, and yeah, we would like everybody to come out and support. That's our monthly fundraiser that I do, uh, for our church building fund from the music department. So if you're available, please come out, support, donate your time, your talent, and your love. Um, we gonna take a short commercial break, and I will be right back. 
Hey, this is Steve Wilkos, and if you guys are looking for a great store for adult entertainment, then check out Sex R Us. Samantha Robinson has everything from lingerie to those adult gadgets you can't find anywhere else. So, hit her up. Ales. You know I'm looking clean when I step up on the scene, luckily. Pop in and get you what you need. You know I'm looking clean when I step up on the scene, luckily. Pop in and get you what you need. Come see what you can fit in, baby. You won't regret it, baby. You looking good, but that bling will make you better, baby. See what you can fit in, baby. You won't regret it, baby. You looking good, but that bling will make you better, lady. Lux. Bling. Shout out Luxus. Bling. And every single day I wake up knowing that it's me Look in the mirror, tell myself, boy, you some cold niggas You made it through shit that make a sucker nigga fall quicker I was young with goals and been told Niggas, let me grow with this flow, that's who I have a soul, nigga From every show to every beat that I wrote, I'm still cracking So you can never play me like an old nigga Nope, that shit won't work, this nigga gub Got a name too big to be swept up under a rug Blue strip crip and give a fuck about a buzz of popularity Young niggas still fuck We are back on Couch Conversations Live. Um, last week we had some technical difficulties, so I am still determined to reschedule Majesty Goodlow because I still want everybody to be educated on the Ice Hot Foundation and what they do. Um, also, I forgot to say on September 21st, for anybody that's coming to Let's Church, we have a prize for the best jersey. I just want y'all to know that. Um, or for the best sports attire. So just to let y'all know. Um, also, September 28th is Praise in the Park, St. Andrews Park, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, the headliner will be Bree Holly. Make sure you are there for that. Um, I will be working there as well. Y'all know I'm busy. I don't just do my business. I do everybody's business. So I'm everywhere on everybody's everything. So, um, yeah, make sure you tap in for that. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, also, for those of you that have not heard about the Blue Light Project, um, the Blue Light Creative Collective, give us an email at bluelightcreatives at gmail.com. Or you could check out the website, bluelightcreatives.weebly.com. Um, for more information, we would love to have you. We are currently recruiting. If you have any questions, contact me directly. Um, also, if you have a commercial or promo video that you would like to be on Couch Conversations this season, please make sure you email it to couchconversationslive at gmail.com. Put commercial or promo video in the subject bar so that I will know what it is. Couchconversationslive at gmail.com. Um, also, you can check us out on the website, divinemanagement.weebly.com slash couch conversations live dot html and you can call or text us at 702-578-6716 also feel free to show your support by zelle or apple pay 702-578-6716 
or Cash App or Venmo, the real daddy girl. Your donations go to games that we play throughout the season and also to upgrade the set and things like that. Um, sometimes we be having technical difficulties, as you can see. So we trying to get it together. I just bought new equipment, so I don't even know what's going on at this point. But yeah, y'all just bear with us. We gonna get through the season. Um... Thank you again to Eja Black Nile for being our guest. Uh, we had to cut the interview short because she forgot she had a show. But we are going to get back into uh, discussions with her about everything that she does. Um, she's worked for Disney as Lion King. Um, she has a whole bunch of stuff going on. She has classes. Stiletto Vixen, Shake That Ass, The Art of Fuckery, and more. Um, she's also in a do documentary called Shakedown that we said that you can find at shakedown.com. So make sure you check that out and join us next Wednesday night. I'm excited about this show for sure, for sure, for sure. Next Wednesday night, we will be talking about dating, sex, and relationships. Y'all know I love a good topic to get y'all involved and to get y'all talking back to me. And this is one of those ones, dating, sex, and relationship. When I asked if people want to be a special guest on the show for this episode, y'all was coming out the woodwork. So I know y'all going to be excited to talk back to me about this. And we have special guest comedian Lip Lock from Las Vegas slash everywhere because I don't even keep up with him no more. He was in Vegas, but he just be moving around now. He's doing tours and all kinds of stuff. So shout out to Comedian Lip Lock, who will be taking time out with us next week. Also, I'm bringing in one of my homegirls, Jenny. She going to be here with us next week, and we going to have a conversation along with a couple of other people. So y'all make sure y'all stay tuned in next Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Dating, Sex, and Relationships with Special Guest. Comedian lip lock. Comedian lip lock. All right. Um. I just want to thank y'all for tuning in every week. Thank y'all for supporting. Thank y'all for coming out to the gigs, to the events. Um. Thank y'all for tapping in when well, y'all don't hear from me. Y'all keep me going, and I just want y'all to know I love y'all for it. Um. All right, y'all. I guess I'm done for tonight. Thank y'all for tuning in to Couch Conversation. We cutting it a little short tonight, but um, that's because our guest had to go. Hey, Stephanie. How you doing? I was just on um an interview with Egypt with Mahogany in the background. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Mahogany. She is such a lovely, beautiful spirit as well. I love her. That's TT. And um, everybody over at Dractiquity, uh, shout out to them. Y'all just, y'all keep me on my toes. And I love y'all for keeping me encouraged, supporting, all of that. Loving on me. I appreciate it. Um... Yeah, so thank y'all for tuning in to Couch Conversations. I appreciate y'all for being here. Like I said, join us next Wednesday night. We're going to talk about dating, sex, and relationships with Comedian Lip Lock. Um, whoever is watching, or I know a lot of y'all going to watch the playback on this because I noticed some of y'all don't watch it when it come on. Y'all watch the playback, and that's fine with me. Y'all will want to talk about it and all that after the fact. That's fine. Um... I'm going to need y'all to be tuned in next week. And somebody please tell Christopher Dozier I'm still trying to get him on my show, okay? Christopher Dozier and Charles Brickmore. Where y'all at? Charles Brickmore, you always asking me about podcasting with me, but every time I hit you up and try to get you on the show, you ghost me. What's up, man? What What is that about? And Christopher, I just want you to come on the show so we can talk about the stuff you be posting. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to do a musician show. Where are the musicians at? Can I get a, a couple musicians to tap in? 
so we can have a conversation. I would love that. Also, before I leave, I'm looking for somebody to do my theme song. Couch Conversation Season 5 needs a theme song. I'm coming in with this 30-second countdown. I would appreciate it if somebody would uh, hook me up with a Couch Conversations theme song. I would really, really, really appreciate it, okay? So, yeah. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. And see y'all next week. Don't forget, you can always support the show. And all donations are appreciated. Make sure you come out on September 21st, 7660 South Compton Avenue at 5 p.m. for Les Church. We will have food vendors, uh, merchandise vendors. Also, we will be having sports trivia. We have gift bags to give away. Um, we have groups that will be performing. So I want everybody to tap in um, and come out and support please I, it is it is just highly appreciated so uh see y'all then see y'all back here next week make sure y'all come back and bring a friend so that we could talk i'm ready to have this conversation and y'all know nothing's off limits on the couch okay see y'all next week love y'all peace and have a divine night blessings